Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And may I just be the first to wish I love this season between Thanksgiving and Christmas. May I just wish my my Jewish friends a blessed Hanukkah. I think it starts next week. My Christian friends the merriest of Christmas and all, everyone else. Happy holidays. I just love the holidays. It's just fun. Love decorating. Love the gift giving. Love the family time. The food. Oh my gosh. The problem is, I think I've already put on my 10 pounds of holiday weights. So I don't know. I don't know if I can put on another. I don't know if I can go through the whole holidays, but we'll give it a good try. This is also a good time when you're going to see your transition. There's just a few plants left with fall color. Most of them have dropped their leaves from that last windstorm we had. There's a few. I just shot a, a picture of uh, flowering pears. They're kind of the last tree to turn red in the fall of the year. They'll always carry you into the first part of December, and then they'll finally drop their leaves. The next windstorm, they'll drop their leaves. I love flowering pears. Now, these do not put on actual pears, fruit, fruiting pears, but they're related to them. They have the same pear leaf, same waxy leaf. It gets up to about 30 feet tall, 30, 35, somewhere in there. And, and wide, great shade tree, robust with that waxy leaf. It just really is drought hardy. But its real claim to fame are twofold. One, the fall color. It's the last tree to turn fall in the, in the year. It's just beautiful. I mean, it's fire engine red. But it's counter. In spring, it has this beautiful white flower, like bridal white flower. It's just, and it's covered before it sets a leaf. It is just absolutely, it's a solid ball of white. And it's real pretty. It's one of those pollinators for bees when they first come out. They're foraging, very hungry in the very early spring, usually April, end of March even. It'll go into bloom. And so it's got a great, and then shade tree in the fall. It's got a, an interesting bark to it. It's not quite like aspen white, but it's very light gray. It's very dist- very pretty out in the yard. So that's what that's what's going on right now. The maples, they're pretty much done. Uh, the sumacs, they've been over for two three weeks. They've been they've been naked. They've been bare or deciduous is what we call that a deciduous tree, deciduous shrub. And there's evergreen trees and shrubs doesn't mean they're ever they're always green it means they always have foliage on them so uh, some of your junipers that last cold snap they started to go from green to light gray or purple or they have different hues to them your uh, nandinas or heavenly bamboos if they're out in the full sun as it gets cooler they'll actually get this beautiful red color to them so they're they've got foliage on them so they're defined as ever green but really, an evergreen can have this changing color, the foliage, as the, as the day part, as the daylight uh, length of day gets shorter and shorter. It changes colors. As the temperature changes, it gets, changes color. As there's frost, it changes different kinds of colors. And you'll find that shade is different from sun. Out in the sun, they get more color, actually. More in the shade, they'll stay that same, just, just green. Ever, they're truly just evergreen. And so it's just plants are so fascinating in, in, in how they react and, and the microclimates that they're put into. This last week, I wrote an article on hardiness zones. What is our growing zone? What does that even mean? USDA zone, hardy, hardy zones. Let me just quickly define that because it's a question that often comes up. That's the reason I put that article out there. Um, if you want that article, take a look. It's at watersgardencenter.com under blog. It'll be the first blog. You can't miss it. Every week I write an article on that's thematic, that's right for the season, and it's right there. So our USDA zone, this is the national zone, and it's rating by how cold will plants go down to. And so we need plants in this Middle Central Highlands area, the center part of Arizona, really from Kingman down to Spring Valley, Cortis Junction, all the way over to really Cottonwood, Payson, Sedona, back over to Prescott, Prescott Valley, Dewey, Humboldt. 
We're all the same zone, pretty much. We're a zone seven. Okay, it might vary a little bit. Jerome, you might be a zone eight because you're up there on that hillside. You get that sunlight, first sunlight right there. You're east facing. It's perfect for growing things in containers. Just the soil's terrible, but you can grow the, the cold hardiness. It's a zone eight. Kingman, you're going to be a zone eight. Uh, Cortis Junction, zone eight. Really Skull Valley, hillside, Kirkland, zone eight. Prescott, Prescott Valley, uh, Dewey Humboldt, zone seven. So a zone eight can grow a zone seven plant or six, five, four, three, two, one. You can grow that. You just can't grow higher. So if yours is a zone six, let's say Flagstaff, Williams, you all are going to be a zone five or six. You need plants that can go sub zero. So every year you all get below zero. You need plants that can handle that. They've got enough antifreeze within the structure of that plant to take on that cold and go, yeah, I'm fine. No worries here. And they come out in spring and go, let's bloom again. Let's, let's, let's put on foliage. Let's put on more fruit again. You need plants that are a zone 5 or a 4 or a 3, 2, 1. So you need plants that go down to minus 10 degrees or lower, uh, but not a zone 7. You can't grow zone 7 up there. You need plants because they would get killed off. But in Prescott, we're a zone 7. So we can grow zone 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we got more range, more variety, more options for us. The higher the number... Once you get into Phoenix, that's when it gets kind of funky. Uh, down there, there's a zone 10, 11, 12s, Palm Springs. Um, there, it's, it's desert plants. If you even look at those things cold, they'll die. So there, you can't grow a, uh, a let's say, a, a lilac tree or Rose of Sharon's or some of these more, these, these zone seven plants down there. It gets too hot. Yeah, you can cheat it, you gardeners. I never, never tell a gardener what they can or can't do. They'll always find a way. They'll create microclimates. I'll put it in the shade, put some shade cloth over it. They'll protect it. They'll make it go. But generally speaking, the Joe average guy, or if you just don't want to work that hard, you want to stick with your zone. Now, the Phoenix is going to be zone 10, really, 10, 9, 8 range, 7s, they're just going to burn up in the summer down there. But up here, we can grow all those perennials. Most of your perennials are going to be a zone 5, 6, or 7. That's echinaceas and gallardias and salvias, all the exotic, beautiful grasses that we grow. We're so famous for up here. You can grow all of those up here. And they'll take the cold. They might go underground like a perennial does, but it will come back fresh from the ground. And you have a whole new plant. And so most of your fruit trees are zone seven, six, five, four, somewhere in that range. These are all your apples and pears and cherries. They do wonderfully up here. They can take our cold and come right back out of it. So zones, your USDA zone, that you need to know what your zone is. And I had put a, a zip code calculator, actually linked into the, the federal site, the USDA federal gauge. It's here, put your zip code in, it'll tell you what your zone is. If you're really in doubt, come talk to your local garden centers. We know what our zones and your neighborhood will know what your, your neighborhood's zone is. But in general, we're going to be a zone five, six, seven here in the maybe eight for those outlying areas, the, the lower elevations, 4,000 foot to, to 4,500, some, somewhere in there, you, you all are a zone eight. If we're in that six, five, 6,000 square foot or, or uh, altitude, we're going to be a zone mm, six, seven. If you're above that, you're going to be a zone colder. So probably a zone five or six. And that's what that is. We're all pretty much the same. When that storm races across the desert and hits us, it, that, that snow and that cold dumps on all of us. In fact, interesting, where the washes are, it's actually colder. You're actually a zone colder than up on the hills, hilltops. Warm air rises. Cold air sinks and almost runs like a river through the back through those dry washes. And so that's why you don't want to plant that new peach tree or apple tree next to that dry wash. You really want it up on the hillside, just out of that cold, so it doesn't get frosted when it's got that new blossom in spring or new fruits coming on. So that's zones in a nutshell. We went into depth with examples and photos and lists. Goes into if this if that's of interest, look at watersgardencenter.com blog. It'll be right there. 
We have Lisa Watersling coming in with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden companion plants for November are Vanderwolf Pine, Flowering Pear, English Ivy, and Camellias. Ice Angel Camellias produce amazing three-inch rosy blossoms with petals that radiate out from the center of Camellias deserve front yard status or admired on a patio or deck. Well adapted to acidic soils beneath oaks, native junipers, and maples. Loves shade gardens, containers, and raised beds. Shop in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. We believe retirement means more time to garden and plants make you happier at Waters Garden Center. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our McMinn Manzanita. Part of Waters' expanding native selection, this is the big, bold manzanita you find growing throughout Arizona. A local evergreen growing wild with the classic red bark for a style and drought-hardy landscape. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love lots of native plants, they love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? What are we seeing? There's there's always a wave of customers with the same thing, same interest, same questions. And so we try to share that. And that's the format for this. But first of all, let me just uh, introduce someone that's, uh, well, my hiking buddy. <laughs> Lisa and I went uh, hiking up in southern Utah, Kanab area, basically. So mm -hmm. uh, if you follow us at all on Facebook, either either through the Garden Center or, or personally, you saw some great photos. So was that inspirational? Or I love Utah. <laughs> And Arizona. And there, I mean, here, we've got a houseboat in Page, so we use that. I mean, it's, it's cold up there. So we said, mm -hmm. eh, we're not going to, we're not launching the runabout. We'll just stay here. We'll go up and just find different slot canyons mm -hmm. and hike around. So we, we found, found a road that actually went up to Warm Creek. You could drive into Warm Creek. This is the <laughs> other side of Wawi and park your car and skip rocks and have lunch and yeah, it's beautiful absolutely beautiful stunning. and nobody's there this time of year which is kind of frightening <laughs> if you break down you, <laughs> no one is there can, can i call triple a from uh, behind the cove yeah no the answer is no no <laughs> <laughs> we went uh, those that are familiar with that area wiregrass canyon mm -hmm. it's uh big water Hook a right and head north, and you'll run into Wiregrass Canyon. It is spectacular. A slot Beautiful. canyon mm -hmm. that goes from big water down to the down to Lake Powell. Mm -hmm. Spectacular. And we went up to um, a Toadstool, yes. which is, I didn't like that one as much. And then, you didn't? Pictures were great, but mass humanity. Everyone, it was such a oh, short hike. Were, Everyone could go there. There were five people there. <laughs> <laughs> there were probably like 10 cars. <laughs> Uh, okay. I like Maybe. letting the dogs go and running. They just run with us and go around. That's, that's, yeah. I, I don't like keeping leashes on a national park trail and it, I feel bottled in and the dogs don't like it either. That's true. But that was one of the, even there, there weren't many people. Well, so true. if you, if you desire solitude and quiet and boy, that is the place to go. Beautiful Cottonwood, heights. Cottonwood Road. Is that Cottonwood right? Springs. Past. Cottonwood, anyway, with Cottonwood something, mm -hmm. past Big Water. That's our next one. There's some spectacular oyster beds, fossilized, yeah. dinosaur tracks, slot canyons. That's where we're going. I think we should go next month. You want to go? So if you don't hear from us again, folks, yeah. go look for us. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Up by Lake Powell somewhere. I'm yeah. sure you can find us. Anyway, garden questions. What do we got this week for... Just what are people talking about? Sure. So our first question is from Chris, and she would like to know, can you grow kumquats in the Prescott area? And if so, do they do better on the side of a hill or on a flatland? Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> there you go. You can grow them. We'll have them uh, in miniature form, dwarf varieties, mm -hmm. but they're grown in containers. And right now, they would have died this week because the yep. cold storm that came in. They, need, they don't like to go down past 
mid mid to high 20s. Are they, they citrus? Go, they're citrus. Okay. Yeah, they're citrus. So persimmons you can grow. That's not a a mm-hmm. a citrusy plant. It's actually a, a not even a pitted fruit. What is a persimmon? I have no uh, idea. I don't know. Besides delicious. <laughs> it's kind of like a plum crossed with a apricot crossed with a yeah. I don't know. Now, apricots, plums, they all grow outdoors. Apples and pears, they all grow outdoors, but not orange, kumquats, limes, lemons. They have to be grown in, in containers. They brought, they're brought indoors as a house plant this time of year. Mm-hmm. So they can be done. It's just you need a little bit bigger house. You know, this is going to be a bush that's going to get three by three by three size house plant. Uh, so anyway, yeah. or have a friend that you know down in Phoenix. <laughs> They could grow them all day long down there. They just don't winter over up there here, unfortunately. Go. It is a bummer, but hey, that's why we so live here. We should cover this too. Avocados, it's the same. same. They don't grow here. All the Southern Cal folks, the Phoenix Desert, Palm yeah. Springs, Tucson. No, all those things that grow there, they don't grow here. Do olives grow here? No. Okay. That, I've heard rumors that they can grow up toward the Verde, down mm-hmm. in those areas. Uh, there's some folks trying them. There's some new hardier varieties. So we've got an olive in, in, in a container dwarf variety at our house. It's definitely a borderline and it is an extreme experiment. We don't sell them at the garden center yet, but if we can get this one to winter over with us, we might introduce a few for those brave gardeners that want to try. They're just bored, not brave, bored. (laughs) They want to try something new. Well, here you go. So, but no, there's uh, figs grow. Grapes do fantastic. Mm-hmm. We can do a lot here. Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Focus on things we can grow. There you Don't go. focus on things that are that you want to grow. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. best garden advice I can give you. <laughs> that works. That works. Uh, our next question is for Sean. He had a Austrian pine planted at the end of October. Yeah. Would like to know how frequently should he be watering it at this point? That's a good question, actually. We're having quite a few folks ask that because as the systems, as the drip systems get turned off, people are wondering. There, it's it's twice a month. So the plants are not using very much moisture. What you're trying to do is take the edge off so those plants, so the soil around the plant does not dry out. And so, and this, this system that we had, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. So maybe the soil, maybe that moisture went in six, seven inches, maybe if you had a lot of rain, some of you are on the backside of Granite Mountain, you got half the rain that let's say parts of Prescott did. So it just depends on where you're at and how the clouds form, how they, how, how it rained. So there I would say, just turn that drip system on couple times a month and water mm-hmm. uh, or, or water by hand. If you got a, just one or two plants, you could take the hose out and take a nice day in January and just go water your plants. Give them a deep soak. I'm not talking a sprinkle, a spit. I'm talking deep a real soak. serious deep soak. Get the entire root zone moist. That plant will form new, new candles, new buds, and just erupt with new growth next spring. Keep them healthy. Good. Okay. Next question is from Danielle. She wants to know if she can move a volunteer pinion pine to uh, a different spot yeah. in her yard. And if so, is now a good time to do it? Yeah, I got to cover that some. If, if it's really, really small, I mean, under three feet, really under two feet, 18 inches, yes, maybe it will transplant. But if they're bigger, no, it's not even worth the energy. I mean, it is... They die almost to the transplant, no matter how many nutrients we give it, no matter how we prep the soil. It's because of the way the root structure grows. We don't have enough to cover that here at this segment, but um, I would say, no, you're better off coming in, spending 40, 50 bucks and buying a pinion pine. And so you've got a hundred percent, you know, chance of it uh, growing. Uh, But, but if you're a gardener and you're bored, try it, see what happens. It's been my experience. I've tried it dozens of times. It's just what we've seen. But if you want to try it and you got one and it's in the way, mm-hmm. go for it. Uh, come in and talk to us. We've got a, a root and grow, an organic composted tea that is like magic for transplant shock. It'll help it form new root hairs. That's probably the best chance you're going to have for that new native plant tra- transplanted mm-hmm. to a new part of the yard. Okay. Well, that's all the questions I had. Normally, we talk so much, we don't get them all. I'll, I'll but hang out with you. But one thing I want to say, because this has happened twice this week. Yeah. We've had people dig up their lilacs 
who have gone dormant, lilacs go dormant. They like to lose their leaves and go to sleep for <laughs> the winter. Ridiculous. Twice this week, I've, I've had someone dig them up and bring them in going, it's dead. I'm going, no, it's not dead. No, it's I would sleepy. put that in the category of stupid. No. Can I go that no, far? No, you cannot. It's a deciduous plant. I mean, look at your well, neighbors. All the plants are going losing their leaves. Be Come nice. On. Okay. They're new to the area. <sighs> Take a breath. New to landscaping. <sighs> new to... Desert dwellers. <laughs> <laughs> getting used to the mountains. <laughs> I always say, if you're not sure, take a picture. Yeah. Come in and talk to us. Call us. Yeah. We can give you advice and tell you what's right, what's wrong. What's if it alive? Is it a dead? There's ways we can help you with that and, instead of pulling these poor little plants out by their I mean, root if, hairs. If that it. happens, well, you could go back and put it in the ground. It would it would totally oh, yeah. take because it's dormant. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if you gave it some of that root and grow, that, that magic stuff I was mentioning about the pinion pine, it'll help it re-root. It's just you're starting over. You're starting, you yeah. lost those root hairs that were forming. So, you lost so now you got to start over. It's like you're starting from scratch. And so mm-hmm. ugh, come talk to a professional before you search Google, figure <laughs> out what you should do. Talk to someone local, a neighbor. Here's someone that's got a no gardens out there. Okay. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We will be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion Plants for November are Flowering Pear, English Ivy, Camellias, and Vanderwolf Pine. Vanderwolf is related to Arizona pines with fluffy foliage. It's remarkably resilient in dry Arizona soils. Makes a graceful specimen in yards or expansive estate landscapes. This distinctive pine long, twisted, silver-blue needles covering the dense branches. Carefree and easy to grow. Shop by store or online at watersgardencenter.com. We believe you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think at Waters Garden Center. Trees prefer a locally delicious plant food, and the really big trees prefer you get it from Waters Garden Center. Your plant luck changes the moment you step through the doors. You can actually feel it happening. Time slows down, your neck muscles relax, and the radio plays better music. It may look like we sell trees and shrubs, but what we really sell is the perfect day. Waters Garden Center, here in Prescott, the place where people who love to garden, they love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lang. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lang. So the yard can look a little messy right now with all those leaves. It's rolling around, kind of blowing into corners. Um, how important is it to rake up all those leaves or needles as far as that goes? If you, you folks up in that, you know, the timber ridge, highland pines, up in those, those, those pine forests, you know, the pine trees drop a lot of needles right now. So everything's going into their winter mode. And so how much is, is too much is really, really the question. So if you've got lawns or flower beds or vegetable gardens, um, you really don't want those leaves to settle on top of that lawn. Like I've got a thyme lawn, like creeping thyme, and leaves, I've got a maple right on top of it, and leaves have dropped. And I'm trying to keep those leaves sort of raked up. I'm, I just want sunlight to get down to the foliage of my creeping thyme. Otherwise, if it stays under under that layer for more than a week or two, you'll start to get rotting or it will start to go subterranean. That, that time will go underground because it can't see the sunlight. Molds start to happen. So it gets too wet, too, stays too moist underneath the leaves. It creates kind of this shell or this, this top dressing that is okay for a little bit, but you really don't want it to stay on. The, so it is important to rake leaves up, to rake needles up. The way that junipers and pine trees operate, this is purely defense. They know that there are limited resources in the forest. And so what they'll do is they'll shed their needles or their their conifers. So they've got a needle to them, whether it's a juniper, Arizona cypress, cedar, cedar, pine tree, whatever it is, it's shedding. So underneath, directly underneath the foliage, you'll see this leaf litter or pine 
straw as what it's defined as pine mulch. And so it's it's looking to bury everything underneath it. Literally, it'll try to shed as many as it can to bury so no plant would dare want to set a seed and start to grow underneath this. Not only that, but some plants, like your, your native alligator junipers, uh, they actually taint the soil. They put uh, poisons in it so nothing can grow except it. It likes, the, it likes this kind of soil, but nothing else does. And so you won't find a lot of different kinds of plants growing underneath these plants. Well, that's fine if it's out in the forest, but if it's in your own backyard and you've got a piece of art underneath that and you're trying to downlight it and uplight it and have, have gardens underneath, you need to clean up some of these pine needles. Then, so many of us tuned in, this this broadcast range goes from the wildland interface and, and, and the wildfire interfaces. So we've got a lot of this interaction with the forests that are out there, and we need to think in terms of defense. How do I protect my home from fire, from animals, from different things that are in the forest? And fire is one of those big things that we need to think about. Not everyone here cares about that. I understand. You don't have that worry about pine, uh, that, that wildfire getting up in the canopies of the pinyon pines, the ponderosas, and it just rages through neighborhoods. Everything is vaporized before their eyes. I mean, just that it's dangerous. Uh, you, you need to think in terms of how can I keep that fire from, how can I help the firefighters fight this fire through my yard? And what pine needles do, they're kind of like a, a, a they're like a matchstick. They're like a fuse. And so if we can keep that fire down on the ground and easy to maintain, the firefighters can fight that all day long. The second it jumps up into the canopies, it's just run. You, there's no saving anything. Just get out of there because it's way too dangerous. And then the wind gets to it and it just carries it quickly, like the speed of wind. That's how fast it can travel. But if we can keep that fire on the ground with simple pruning, uh, keeping the, the you you folks in those areas. I'm not going into that's not for this show. I've got a whole lesson on just how to prevent wildfires, uh, how to mitigate that with landscaping. But the pine needles, a few are good, but if you've got more than let's say three or four inches of pine needles, it's getting dangerous. Now all of a sudden, there's fuel there for it to burn through. So you want to clean that up, rake some of it up. Uh, don't don't rake all of it up because now your pine trees become dry. They're exposed to sun burning, uh, drying out the soils. Weeds can now compete. So help that plant compete to, to prevent weeds from growing, to keep the ground moist, to keep the sun off that off the root zones so the plant be, remains healthy, but remove most of it, except for, for about, again, the book says about four inches or less, uh, but take most of those needles out so that burning that that smoldering fire can't creep across the ground and then ignite other things in the yard pine needles are good leaves they're good they're good mulch chew them up i, I send mine all through the the lawnmower then i'll top dress my flower beds i'll chop drop, drop dress around my roses it's like it's like gold it's perfect it's great plants feed off of it. the worms love it and so this is good stuff but don't leave it on the lawn. Don't leave it out there where it just builds up. And you don't maintain it until next spring. That's not so good. It's not as healthy for the gardens. So rake up at your convenience. Uh, let it blow in the corners. That's fine. And then use it. Add it to the compost bin or bag it. Get it off there. Uh, but that's how you deal with fall in the mountains of Arizona. Be right back after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Water's companion plants for November are English ivy, camellia, vanderwolf pine, and flowering pear. Flowering pear starts spring with dazzling white flowers, shady green leaves in the summer, and brilliant reds in autumn. Even the winter bark is attractive. This exquisite tree is ideal for lawns, lining driveways, or specimens in small spaces. Shop the most trees in town by store or online at watersgardencenter.com. We believe if plants die, it's our fault. So bring it back at Waters Garden Center. 
You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Back in the studio is Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week and just shares her garden insight, her thoughts, what what has she been meditating on throughout the week? <laughs> Deep thoughts that can that we can share over the airwaves. That is uniquely from your perspective. Mm-hmm. And so, gardeners, you talk to any gardener; they've got ten different ways, thoughts at any given time on gardening. Oh, yeah. And so, so just so the show isn't boring, just me droning on and on about local gardens. Well, Lisa comes in and makes us well. You make the airwaves sound better. Oh, thank you, dear. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got for us this week? Well, you were talking about meditating. I've really been working hard this whole week to be thankful. Oh, your Thanksgiving was great. Yeah. track of things that I'm thankful yeah. for. Sure. And so that's kind of been nice. So yeah. what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for you. <laughs> God's truly blessed. And I was thinking the other day, earlier in the week, I went, uh, just so sharing COVID stuff, mm-hmm. this new law coming in, anyone over 100 employees, which isn't us, but mm-hmm. anyone I've got friends that do have yeah. a lot of employees and going, well, this mandates and this kind of stuff. I'm going, you know, we haven't had one case of COVID here in the garden center, in the staff, mm-hmm. anywhere. I mean, a year and a half, not one case. I mean, I know comp- I've got friends that had went through the entire staff, throughout the, everyone in the company. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Your sister just got it. She was vaccinated. The whole, she's a hygienist, the whole hygienist office got it. it was, we are so blessed. I'm oh, thankful yeah. for that, that mm-hmm. I think God's looking after us more than we could possibly know. Mm-hmm. And we do all, we think we do all these things ourselves. We're <laughs> so safe. We sanitize everything. Everything's spaced out. We're remodeled right. the whole store, but really it's, you can only do so much. True. And then, then kind of your guardian angel or providential things happening that look after you. I think that's the case, but mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm thankful for dinner Thursday out of your sister's place in right. Chino Valley. We didn't have to host. <laughs> they did. We just I mean, brought a fruit cook. salad. So it was, that was so easy. Yeah. So <laughs> That is true. So lots of things to be thankful yeah. for this year yeah. as we move into the holiday season. The so, holiday season. I know. We're going to start putting Christmas da, da, da. music. We it's already on. It yet. Yeah, yep. that's true. It's on. <laughs> there we go. Now, all the students, I, I'm playing it for the dogs now when I leave. Oh, I turn I'm like, Christmas, Alexa, play Christmas. We do have spoiled dogs. <laughs> yes, very much. They are. But so this time of year, this is when we get the holiday plants in. So the poinsettias and the Christmas cactus. And um, there are some tri- tricks to taking care of those that you enjoy them for the whole season. Yeah. So especially poinsettias, what I, what I find here, a lot of people do, a couple mistakes they make. Number one. They're buying them maybe at a grocery store or someplace that's like right near the front door. And every time those doors open and close, this blast of cold air comes on them. And they don't like that. They're tropical plants. (laughs) They're used to humid, moist, warm Mm -hmm. air. Yeah. They really don't like that. Another thing, a mistake a lot of people make, they're coming from the Valley or California. Do not put your poinsettia outside. No, no, no. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how many times I see that. And I drive by and I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's that <laughs> desert influence up here. They would yeah. never do that in the Midwest right. or the East Coast. But here you got this, mm-hmm. this culture that collides. Yeah. Cold weather four season with tropical desert folks, and they don't right. know, they just don't know what to do, right? But that's why they're tuned in here that to is the correct. mountain gardener, they can become smarter. That's right. So, yeah, don't put it outside, don't put it in an area, don't put poinsettias in areas where they're getting a lot of cold Drafty. on them. So, if you're like a front door that you go in yeah. and out of a yeah. lot, would not be a good spot. The other one is like under a heater vent so that the hot air is blowing on sure. them, they don't like that either. So Put them in a spot where temperatures are just kind of mild and even, yeah. um, you know. And then the other thing with them is they like moisture, but they don't like to be wet. Soggy wet. The roots. Right. They don't right. like the roots to be mm-hmm. consistent moist, but not soggy. Right. So it's not so a drainage. Evenly moist, but got not it. floating in water. So a lot of times when you buy those pretty poinsettias, you've got a foil wrap or something yeah. around them. Well, those don't drain. So people are watering, watering, the water just kind of builds in there. Uh, yep. They do not like that. And you'll start, the centers will start 
just kind of falling out of them and leaves will drop yeah. off. So just something to be careful of. So for take those them guys. out of that foil. When you and water, water them mm -hmm. in the sink or something right. when they're fine, when they're done dripping, put them back in the pretty yeah. sleeve right? or the festive bow Bowl and stuff. Whatever yeah. you've got. Gotcha. Makes um, sense. The other thing when you How water, should you water those? It's going to depend on your house. Yeah. Probably once a week, once a week. Okay. Um, the other thing is when you do water them, water them with tepid to lukewarm water. Don't use that cold water right out of your sink. Gotcha. They're, they're not real happy with it. Yeah. They don't like the cold. They're basically yeah. Costa Rican plants, mm -hmm. South Mexico. That's where they're natural. That's where they were found by the first botanist, mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Poinsett, I think it was his name yeah. back in the 1800s. So he found it. It was into plants. He just, it's gone global. And mm -hmm. so think in terms of Costa Rica and you're okay. You go out <laughs> with your swimsuit, soak your feet in a yeah. nice coral right. uh, mm -hmm. a beach. They'll be happy too. Right. Right. So a lot of pretty colors this year. We've got the white, we've got pink, we've got uh, country quilt, which is kind of a red and white blotch. It's really a pretty plant. And then an ice one, which is kind of a red, white, variegated. It's just really Sounds pretty. pretty. Wow. Yeah. That's unusual. So some nice ones. So they're this in year. now. So mm -hmm. you've got them right there on the floor. We got them. And, and the, we'll have red through the season, but those, some of those unusual those, different you can't find them anywhere those go fast those will go fast and once you're out you can't get more of the crop it's right. just gone yeah right so yeah get in early shop early and enjoy your plants through the holidays the other one is the christmas cactus so that's another one people love to give as gifts or they're buying one for themselves because you know great grandma betty yeah. had one and yeah. they want to start their tradition and they're getting those come we have a lot of different colors of those some really pretty striking ones uh, red and white variegated some really pretty pinks and oranges and greens and whites wow. uh, all different colors on those so definitely come in and check those out because those do go really fast. Um, but there again, they don't, even though they Christmas cactus, they're not really a true cactus. Um, don't put it outside. No. <laughs> uh, don't put it in a hot window where the heat's going to come in on it and burn it. And the other thing with those, if you keep them too wet, they will drop every blossom they have. <laughs> so they really do like to be on the dry side. Yeah. So you do definitely don't want to overwater them there again. When you do water that nice tepid water, this time of year is perfect for them. Um, but if you start, if you've seen your blossoms drop, you're probably over water over water gotcha. you know? or, or really cold water. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, both of those will do that. So we do have both of those in stock right now. New, new orders, lots of selection. Got to check those out. Um, a lot of people will bring in herbs, um, you know, to decorate with or they're cooking with through the holidays. Like lavenders and rosemary. Lavenders, yeah. rosemary, okay. oregano's time. A lot of times you see them in the little tree form. Yeah. You know, where they've kind of topiaried them, made little trees out of them, which is kind of fun. It's a great thing to do. Great way to, to, to decorate. Um, but those guys don't over water. <laughs> People love to water things inside yeah. their house, I've noticed. So you just have to be really careful that you're not keeping things too wet. So again, what? Wet. Once a week? Once Maybe every rosemaries? Once, once every 10, 14 days? Mm -hmm. kind of, what, you, what you have now is the, the heater is on. Right. So the heater like dries the air out inside your house, warms it mm -hmm. up, but it dries it out. So if it's in a drafty area where it's getting a lot of blowing, it can dry out faster. Just mm -hmm. You'll see pockets. You're, it's a different watering. Right. This time of year, just because the windows have closed up and right. the heater's going like crazy. Mm -hmm. And so that dries plants out differently than, let's say, it would in spring or, or summer. You know what the best summer. way to handle that? No. Get a moisture meter. Yeah, well, there we go. That's a good stocking <laughs> stuff for, for, for yeah, gardener. No. Moisture <laughs> meters take the aggravation yeah. out of so yeah. many things and the guesswork. Because things can look really dry on top. And then you stick that moisture meter in there. It's like, whoa, wet, wet, wet. So it can be very, it can fool you. So moisture meter just takes the gas out and you don't have to. I think it puts the joy in all for $14.99. <laughs> it's just, they don't cost very much no, for they're very no more guesstimates. It's just very great. True, very true. So, I mean, now is a great time to, everybody's decorating for Christmas now. We're past Thanksgiving. So come in and, and check out the plants. So I had someone ask, do you have, they've been pent up demand for Christmas cactus. Christmas cactus. They're hard to find. It's a limited crop. Mm -hmm. You will have them for about two weeks, lots of color, every size, every shape, every color. And then towards Christmas, we run out of 
colors and size, you have less choice. And by the week prior to Christmas, they're, they're, they're gone. They're just, they're not going to be there. So that's yeah. one, the, the weird colors, grab them. The right. interesting, different, new, grab them early. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until well, I, I'm going to go shopping later and I'll come in and get one later. They won't be here. Sure. So anyway, thank you, Lisa. Great. Okay. The, the uh, Christmas, how to take care of the holiday plants in your yard, in your house, house. not yard, <laughs> in your house. <laughs> Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. I used to be cocky and actually dared to beat the big boxes at their own game. Since the beginning, we were known for the very best plants in town. But with youthful ambition, we added a line of inferior plants, contractor grade, that matched the box stores and beat their prices. We failed miserably. The plants were side by side. Waters hand-picked quality at the higher price and the inferior plants at the lower price with astounding results. The inferior plants, not bad quality, just not full and nice, were still there a month later. The hand-picked quality plants, they had been restocked twice and the bench was empty again. The youthful cockiness, it's tempered and with age comes wisdom and knowing who you really are. Waters Garden Center doesn't compete with the marts and the boxes. We simply grow the very best plants our family is famous for. We will never offer inferior plants. Cross my heart. Pinky swear. Waters Garden Center. 1815 Iron Springs Road here in Prescott. Gardening has always come natural to me. Green thumbs, they just run in the family. So when the Family Garden Center was offered to Lisa and I, we jumped on the opportunity. I've always loved coming to the nursery, being surrounded by all the beauty, helping the backyard gardener and passing on some of that natural magic that happens so easily for me. We aren't just selling plants, we're offering garden success. My name is Ken Lane, owner, and you'll feel the magic here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road, here in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. And we are back. You're tuned into the Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane. But the beauty of having a studio right here in your own garden center, you're connected with gardeners. You know the trend. You know what people are asking, which is great. And then also, you can interview folks that are just really interesting. And one of the most interesting gals I know uh, in my world is Amy Langley. Thank She's you. actually uh, one of our managers here but the reason amy is so interesting she's our color trend pottery consultant you want style you talk to amy welcome to the studio amy well thank you ken yeah so you have had the 2020 pottery show up yes i have so the uh colors are fabulous i love the new textures so thank texture you. texture seems, seems to be the thing but this is one of those things you need to follow the trends. I thought, oh, we need to have an interview. You need to come on and tell us. So you actually fly up to the factories and you see the styles you hand pick for this region. Absolutely. The colors and styles you think would work for customers. And you're out actually in the field. You're actually, you go on consults. You go and to people's homes. You go, oh, this is the style you want. Here's the size you need. Here's the color you want. So how do you pull that off? We need to share that. People well, need it's, to know. doing the in-home consultations has been incredibly helpful with buying our pottery. For one thing, you get to go to these folks' houses, and a lot of them are just moving here. Um, they're not sure what's going to grow. They want to know what's going to work best for them. But also at the same time, while I help pick them, you know, pick their plants, um, I get to see what's going on in the styles in new homes. And so we have, right now, I would say a really amazing color trend. We have the most incredible selection of blues, greens, just these really gorgeous colors that pop with a lot of our neutral colored houses. And a lot of the new homes, the, the builds are so different. So there's all different kinds of spaces that people have nowadays. They have short posts, they have tall walls, they have all different shapes and sizes of things they want to perk up, basically. I mean, a lot of, let's face it, a lot of our new homes are beige. 
Yeah, they're boring. Beige. I mean, utterly boring. Yes, I desert love the beige. New, I love the new textures, the front. You know, they got the lick and stick rock look kind of thing, but they're still just beige. Yes. I mean, the singles are beige, yeah. So I you can help. totally liven up any space with just a gorgeous colored pot. And this year, what we really concentrated on was to, to vary our colors and our shapes more than anything, because now I really feel like we have something for absolutely everybody. We have, we have tall, slender pots. We have short ones that are almost squat. We have uh, large mouth, round planters that look absolutely amazing on those about chest-high posts that people have on their walls, yeah. their concrete walls. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I, I can tell. <laughs> I am too. I mean, you had the entire parking lot clogged for a week processing two semi loads of pottery. No, no, that's good. But I came out and I said, you know, Amy, you know, Christmas trees are coming like Tuesday. Yes, I know. All this I'm, stuff. I'm, I'm well out of here. Get it out of here. I'm well aware. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of the pressures on the seasonality is changing, but. I, I was helping a customer. He had a big pottery order. Uh, I was trying to match some colors and doing the style thing. And he goes, well, I need a couple pairs that match. You know, Maybe I should wait till spring. I'm going, listen, Bob, don't wait. Here you can get, now you've got matching pairs. You, you've got the best selection. If you wait until spring, this is the pottery that will carry us through spring. It's not like we're going to get more. You can just go get another truckload of pottery. This and it was more than a truckload. Heavy. It's It's big. So you get it in full you, container loads, and so you want to get you want to be there at the front edge, not the back end where you've got a, the, not the leftovers, but there's less pairs to pick from. Right, right. Now so. is definitely the best time. Yeah. For the best selection. Yeah, and then also something to watch just with pots. We've been doing pottery for a lot of decades. Uh, we've been importing direct from from overseas for many years. Really, be careful if you're from the Southwest areas. Be really careful of what you're buying. So we have this heavy influence of Phoenix pottery. So this is Mexican clay. It's, it's terracotta, earth tones, clay, clay pots, this heavy Spanish, bright colors, which fits the Southwest style. But those kinds of pots do not winter over. They don't. They don't take our freeze and thaw. So you go up and hand pick the varieties that that winter over with us. They yeah, actually exactly. will last. The last thing we want is somebody who falls in love with a pot and yeah. they go home and they put their favorite plants <laughs> in it and then it cracks in half over the winter. And it's just, that's an unhappy customer. That's me unhappy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We get egg on our face. Yeah. It's just the, Absolutely. the worst. Absolutely. We have to have the best here. We have hot summers. We have cold winters. Um, but then, you know, for the rest of the year, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah, you bet. So now, how? what is the trend right now? So you're seeing blues. That's good. Blues and earth greens. Earth tones. Blues yeah. and greens kind we, of an earth tone. We definitely tone. have a lot of earth tones, too, for the folks who like more neutral colors and that rustic look. Um, and then we got some some really new stuff, which I'm excited about, which was inspired by one of my clients, Catherine and Lee, um, in Prescott Lakes. I went to their home for a consultation. Lovely folks. They have this gorgeous kitchen that has these this almost like a citrusy lime green paint, and it's so bright and so cheerful. So I got pots that same color with Catherine in mind. And, for uh, indoors or for it, outdoor use? Either one. Either one. Either one. So I saw a lot of houseplants are a trend. So they this, this are. This, yeah. is, uh, this is uh, rocketing up as far as uh, gardening goes. And but, but if you have a houseplant, you can't just keep – you got this $2,000 sofa – Window coverings, <laughs> new flooring. You don't you, want a plastic pot. You don't no. want a plastic <laughs> pot. Well, you, you need a nice container for your houseplants to right. show off. I see you focused a lot on those. Lots of saucers, lots mm -hmm. of colors. Yeah. And you so. got to have a saucer. I mean, that really dresses up your pot. And even if you're putting your pot outside, and I know our, our folks love their patios. There are plenty of folks that come in and say, well, when I water it, I just don't want the dirt all over my patio. So I think this is, I know in the four years I've been here, this is the best selection of saucers that we're, we have. And we actually, I just sourced a new place that Ooh. will be, yes, that will be sending us some new ones, but I'm going to keep that to myself. That should hopefully be here in the next two weeks. No, I haven't even heard of that no, yet. No, you haven't. So that's exciting. <laughs> so direct from the source. So now what's the trend? What sizes are people going with when you're, you're one of the consultants that go out, you, yeah. you, you represent waters in the field mm -hmm. and design for folks. What are the sizes, styles that you're seeing? You know, what are they really, planting in them? Well, you know, they're... The nice thing is you can pretty much put anything in a pot. Um, we've had folks that uh, literally have 
bought pots that we could fit our entire planting crew in yeah. and put them <laughs> Three in, body yes, pots. and put them <laughs> in front of their barn and they look stunning. Um, down to just little pots that they want to give as a gift with a succulent in it for Christmas. Um, we've seen a lot of Emory Riddle students coming in. That's true, yeah. To dress up their dorm rooms. And Prescott yeah, College both. to dress up their dorm rooms. Um, and that's been really fun seeing um, some younger people really excited about plants. And um, so we have, basically, I have every single size because there's so many different needs out there. Um, the folks with these, um, you know, the larger homes are tending to go with the larger pots, yeah, at, especially um, at the front entrance on either side of the front door. That's a big thing right now with an evergreen that they dress up. So uh, one of my clients did um, several large cobalt blue in front of her um, her house is kind of like a taupe color. And uh, she put some uh, boxwoods in there we both loved. And then she dresses them up with pansies right now um, for the winter. And then we talked about what she's going to do for spring as we get into summer to dress up some new annuals. So there, I just really feel like with the pottery, it just it just brightens up everything we have and our desert landscaping. Yeah, I agree. One thing to watch, one thing to, if you make a mistake, just, this is just experience from the years. Um, if you're going to make a mistake, it'll be in scale. You get a pot. They look <laughs> yeah. so big here at the garden center. You take them home and your house just dwarfs it down. You go, yeah. it's not even close to big. Folks, it's a post. That just happened to some it. folks yesterday. I'm They've just, been in every day exchanging a pot for a bigger one. I told them I was going to give them aprons and put them to work. They've been here so much. <laughs> So if in doubt, take the bigger one. And Correct. almost every time, you that's the right. If you're going to make a mistake, make it in that direction. Bigger is better. It allows you to grow bigger things for longer. Uh, but small, just your house dwarfs things. It looks like you get this half million dollar house. It looks like you ran out of money because of two pots on either side of the door. <laughs> you just you don't want that. So right, Amy Langley and and our pottery buyer designer. Here at Waters Garden Center Extraordinaire. Thank you for Thank coming you in and so sharing much, that Kim. with us, Amy. Okay, we will be back with more on The Mountain Gardener right after this. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Arizona Cypress. If you want low-maintenance natives, easy care, and reduced water use, then this is the evergreen for you. When planted in rows, they block the wind, traffic noise, and make the perfect privacy screen. Comes in an Arizona blue, easy to grow, and prefers monsoon planting. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love native evergreens, they love to shop. You might say I've been part of the local garden scene even before birth. My father started the very first garden center in northern Arizona and ran the family business with my mother, even while she was pregnant. The nursery was my preschool, with many joyous after-school hours spent playing in the family business. Waters isn't just a garden center. It's a safe place for kids and pets alike. My name is Lisa Waters Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road, here in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. Well, I sure hope that you had a a pleasant, safe Thanksgiving. That your holidays will be, to come, will be just blessed. Will just be fun. Decorations are going up. I just love this time of year driving through neighborhoods. Uh, we're putting ours up this weekend, so the out, outside and the inside, probably not the Christmas tree. So I think we're going with a living Christmas tree this year. So living trees are, you know, you've got cut trees. They're they're grown at, in a field. And they're cut, the roots, they're cut severed from the roots. They're brought in. You, you put them on a, a tree stand. You decorate them, and they're dropping needles like crazy by the end of end of the holidays, by, by, by New Year's. Hopefully they make it past Christmas. Um, living trees are that, but they're on the roots. And so there, when you get done, you take it outside and you plant it out in the yard afterwards. They're great for that. Um, they cost about the same as a cut tree. The negative, they'll be a little bit smaller, but they're on their roots. So the tree is physically smaller, but it's got that root ball. So it's sitting two feet above its root ball already. 
and then you can't keep them in, in the house quite as long. Because they're outdoor trees, they need to remain cold. We need to keep them asleep. And so you want to bring them in the house, use them a week, 10 days, no more than two weeks. I don't care what variety. It's not going to like that. And then you want to bring them back outdoors, get them used or acclimated to that cold again. Then you go plant them right out in the yard, you know, January 2nd, whatever. And so that's the negative with them. But if you're, if you can go with the rhythm, you can keep that timing. You can, if you can time things, um, it's a great way to go, especially if you're in a new, a new house, you need more landscaping. Boy, living trees are the way to go. Now, with that being said, be careful what variety you, you go with. You need to know there's all these desert varieties are brought up here and sold as living Christmas trees. Even house plants. There's a house plant variety of, of pine tree that will not grow outdoors. Um, the desert pine trees don't grow outdoors up in the up at elevation. They're, they'll get cold they, and there's all kinds of diseases they get on. There's, there's, I could go on and on. So make sure you're doing your homework. You're buying a mountain pine or spruce that you can plant in your yard that will thrive afterwards in our climate. So do, just know who you're buying it from. Don't just go into Costco or the box stores or whatever, big orange and blues. Go, oh, that looks good. I'll take that. Use it for a week or two and then plant it outdoors. It might just die. And it wasn't you. They just brought their Phoenix inventory up here and sold it in the mountains and you were doomed from the from the second you put that thing in your cart. Just just be aware. And then there's all the fake, you know, plastic Chinese stuff. It smells like dust. <laughs> I don't know. We're going living tree this year. Anyway, enjoy your decorating. Enjoy the poinsettias, the amaryllis, the Christmas cactus, all the holiday garden stuff that happens, the rosemaries, the lavenders that are just decorated, made to look better than the, almost not real, but they're beautiful. And yes, you can continue to garden, have something living, thriving in your indoor space, even your outdoor gardens, if you plan it just right. And we're here to help. I mean, Lisa and I, we camp out here. What We're here all weekend long to this shop small, you know, support your small business folks, you know, this American Express shop small thing. Um, I, I realize everyone's going to going to rush Walmart anyway. I just afterwards <laughs> come say hi. <laughs> We're here all weekend. We love talking to fans of the show or talking plants up with folks. And we love hanging out with gardeners. Those folks that love funky hats and great gloves and just being out in fresh air. We love talking to gardeners. As I started the show to my Jewish friends, may you have a blessed Hanukkah to my Christian friends, the merriest of Christmas and to everyone else. Have the happiest of holidays from all of us here at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion Plants for November are Camellia, Vanderwolf Pine, Flowering Pear, and English Ivy. English Ivy stays waxed green through winter forming a lush ground cover under large trees. Quickly climbs walls, pillars, arbors, and fences without support. Use English ivy to cascade over hanging baskets or tall planters with a perfectly shaped Alberta spruce in the middle. Shop exciting evergreen vines in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. We believe small business can win against impersonal box stores at Waters Garden Center. Waters Garden Companion Plants for November are Vanderwolf Pine, Flowering Pear, English Ivy, and Camellias. Ice Angel Camellias produce amazing 3-inch rosy blossoms with petals that radiate out from the center of Camellias deserve front yard status or admired on a patio or deck. Well adapted to acidic soils beneath oaks, native junipers, and maples. Loves shade gardens, containers, and raised beds. Shop in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.